So let me walk you through how to import in your CSV into your file. This tutorial is going to be applicable to your Etsy seller spreadsheet or your Etsy import add-on, whichever file you've purchased. Uh, I'm gonna show myself doing it in the Etsy seller spreadsheet, but if you have the Etsy import add-on, it works exactly the same. You're just gonna see a few additional tabs that you don't have on your version of the spreadsheet since you have the import add-on. So let's discuss how to import in your Etsy orders CSV each month. Importing in this one CSV from Etsy is going to automatically give us the totals we need for these five light blue rows. We're going to do a simple copy and paste into the applicable months blue tab down here. And doing that one copy and paste is going to quickly import in your total Etsy sales, your sales tax collected that you actually received from Etsy, which we're going to dive into in detail later, your shipping received, that's what your customers paid you for shipping, and any partial refunds you issued. And we'll talk more about refunds later too. It's also going to import in your Etsy credit card processing fees. So first, all you have to do is log into your Etsy shop manager. Once you are in there, you want to click settings, go to options, click download data, and then you'll be brought to this screen where you can download several different types of CSV files. We want a very specific one. We want the orders CSV. Please do not accidentally select the order items CSV. We want orders. And then you want to download whatever month you are working on. So right now I am going to say I'm working on February 2019. So I select February 2019 from the drop down menu and then click download CSV. It's going to save somewhere on your computer hard drive. You want to open that CSV in whatever spreadsheet software you are working with. And when you open it in your spreadsheet software, it should look similar to this, all nicely organized in columns and not a bunch of garbled uh, data mixed together. So if it doesn't look like this, you may need to do some troubleshooting. Once it opens, we want to copy this CSV and paste it into our February tab of our Etsy seller spreadsheet. So the best way to copy that is start with row two. I'm going to select row two by clicking the two here. See how once I click the gray two, the entire row is selected. Once I click row two, I'm going to click and drag all the way down to the end of my data set until the last row of data is highlighted. And then I'm going to copy this data. It's all highlighted and now I'm gonna copy it. And you can copy either by right clicking and going to copy, or you can do edit copy, or you can do uh, command C or control C on your keyboard. But once it's copied, you're gonna see what they call the dancing ants around that data selection. So I've got it copied. Now I need to head over to my Etsy seller spreadsheet, navigate to my February tab, and I am going to paste it in right here. I'm gonna paste that same data right here. My column headers are already here for me, and now I'm gonna paste in. And I will insert a side note. If you are using numbers, you need to unhide these columns first. That's only if you're using number software on a Mac. I've got a separate video for you to watch with that, but if you are in Excel or Google Sheets, you're good to go right now. No extra steps, leave the columns exactly how they are. So how do we paste this in? And do the same thing, select all of row two. Click that two right here, all the way on the left, have the entire row highlighted. Then you can right click and paste, edit, paste, or control or command V on your keyboard. You just wanna paste that data in and it's going to paste exactly in the correct spot all the data will, should be going into the same column headers of the CSV that it came from. And if you've done that copy and paste correctly, you, sh you should be able to see data populating in your blue rows. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any shipping received, any partial refunds issued, or any sales tax collected in the month of February, but I do have Etsy sales showing up and I have my credit card processing fees showing up. 
but you very well might see stuff populating in all five of those blue rows. After you do your import, you'll also notice some data populating on your blue sales tax tab and on the orange by state tab, um, but we'll talk about those in detail later. But this is how you import in or copy and paste your order CSV from Etsy into your spreadsheet. So before we move on, I want to chat real quick about what exactly we're importing in with these blue rows from your orders CSV. Let's go through these items one by one. First, you've got your Etsy sales. And this is simply the sum of row of column Q minus column T from your order CSV. So that's your order value, basically what your item or your items that sold were listed for minus any discounts applied to the order. It does not include shipping paid to you. It does not include sales tax paid to you. And it's before any fees were taken out. So that is what your Etsy sale amount is. Your sales tax collected is a very special sum here. And that, and I have a note next to it reminding you to always verify this sum here. There is a lot of stuff going on with online sales taxes these days. Things are changing a lot and Etsy has honestly been inconsistent in how they are reporting some of these issues related to sales tax. Now I know when we just imported in that example, I didn't have any sales tax populating here to verify. So I'm going to show you a quick example um, where I do have amounts populating here that I need to verify so that you can see what that looks like. The monthly summary tab of this version of the spreadsheet is gonna look slightly different because it's an older version from an older video, but the action of verifying this row is still gonna be the same. So let's look at that example with some other data. So in general, this, call, this cell right here is going to be summing up anything broken out in column W on your order CSV, anything Etsy includes in your sales tax column. Now, without getting too deep into the nitty gritty details of marketplace sales tax and online sales tax and everything, ideally, you should only have amounts in this column for sales tax collected for your own state. If your state is not one of the states that Etsy is collecting and remitting on your behalf, the list of states in which Etsy is collecting sales tax has been changing as time goes by. And at this point, we're seeing that they're collecting and remitting for the majority of the states in the US, but it's not all of them yet. So definitely know whether your state is one of the ones that has marketplace sales tax rules. So you should not have amounts reported for those states in column W. Basically, you want to look at your column W here, and if you see amounts showing up in this column, they're going to travel to your verify line here on your monthly summary tab. So if you have amounts showing up in column W, I just suggest that you verify them because Etsy sometimes inconsistently accidentally puts amounts here in this column that they shouldn't because by being in this column, that signifies that you actually received this sales tax from Etsy. It's not something that they collected and then paid over to that state on your behalf. So if during the time period you're doing your books, for whatever month you're working on, if your state was a non-marketplace state um, and you collected sales tax in that state, then you would correctly see amounts showing up here. Sometimes you'll have an amount showing up here for a random state that you're not in or a state that is, or even a state that you may be in, but it's a marketplace state in which Etsy is collecting on your behalf. If that's the case, you want to zero it out. Any amounts showing up in column W should only be there if it's a state in which your business has a nexus and you have set up your Etsy shop to collect sales tax for that state and it's not one of those marketplace states. So that's the only circumstance under which you should see amounts showing up in column W and populating over here on row five for that month. So I want you each month when you import in to make sure that you don't have amounts showing up in column W for states other than your own, assuming you're not in a marketplace sales tax state. 
If you are in a marketplace sales tax state and you don't have Nexus anywhere else, then this column should be zero all the way down and you should have zero in your sales tax collected column. Now, when testing out the spreadsheet, I do occasionally see some instances where let's say it is a Canadian sale or a UK sale or an Australian sale or even like a Washington state sale or a Pennsylvania sale or somewhere where they have that marketplace sales tax or VAT or GST or something like that. And Etsy just randomly does have an amount here in column W when it shouldn't be because it's not your state. It's just a weird way that they're reporting it and it seems like they don't have everything streamlined totally yet. So you may sometimes see sales tax reported in column W for one of those states or countries. So if you see that, you don't want that to be included in your revenue here. You don't want that included in this amount. So if you ever come across a case like that, you wanna just zero it out put a zero in, like literally put a zero in that cell so that it's not included in your sales tax collected. So just make sure you verify that column, just eyeball it real quickly each month and make sure everything's okay there. Next, we've got shipping received. So this is the amount that the customer pays you, the seller, for shipping. Um, a lot of times we get confused about why this is revenue to begin with, but it does need to be included as part of your revenue total for both bookkeeping and tax purposes. The amount they pay you is revenue. The amount you pay for shipping, shipping labels, postage through Etsy or USPS or whatever, that is an expense that's totally separate. That's gonna end up going on your postage expense tab. But the amount that your customer pays you is revenue and needs to be recorded here and will be imported here based on your shipping column on the order CSV, which is column V. Next, we've got this partial refunds row, and this is importing in any partial refunds you issue to your customers on Etsy, um, whether it's for part of the sales price or shipping overages or whatever that you're refunding, um, that's gonna be imported in. Now, Etsy used to report full refunds on this order CSV as well, but um, in June 2020, they started just putting buckets of zeros in this report instead of only zeros for orders that had full refunds. Um, so only partial refund information can be recognized by the formulas now because there's no distinguishing between orders that didn't have any refunds and orders that had full refunds. That's because Etsy doesn't actually list your refund on the order CSV. It's kind of confusing. They just state the balance of the sale after a refund was potentially issued because they used to keep the other guys blank, but now they just put zeros everywhere and you will see amounts generated for any orders in which you issued a partial refund. So doing some basic math, we can back out and figure out how much was actually refunded. Um, so like see this sale was for $43.99 and then after the refund was issued and after credit card processing fees were taken into account, I actually refunded $12. So you can do that by doing, you can get that by doing some math here. And then the spreadsheet automatically picks that up for you uh, so that you see that partial refund of $12. Now I know that you may be saying, well, Janet, how do I deal with orders in which I issued a full refund? I'm gonna have a separate video with more detail on how to do that but just know that that's where this partial refund amount is coming from. And I will note real quick that the order CSV does not show any canceled orders. If you end up canceling and fully refunding an order, it will not show up here on the order CSV, which could be something to note if you're trying to reconcile to your 1099K, but I am making a separate video on that, so make sure you check that out if you have questions about what I just said. Finally, we have got the Etsy credit card processing fees. These are coming from column Z. Um, and this is one, and this is one of the three fees that Etsy charges you for your sales. This is the credit card processing fee 
In the US, it's 3% plus 25 cents of your sale, and it is automatically being imported in for you, so you don't need to enter that one again. And it is adjusted for partially refunded credit card fees. So if you do get credit card fees partially adjusted for any refunds that you might issue, any partial refunds you, you should issue at least, uh, the formula does take that into account. So that is how we are bringing in these five different totals all from your orders CSV.